Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is an introduction to a video which will have its own introduction, and that video was for DEF CON 29 in Las Vegas, August 2021. Now, I got approached to see whether I could submit a pre-recorded presentation for which I would then do a live Q&A for, uh, for DEF CON for the Lockpick Village. And I, of course, said yes, and I put together this, this presentation. I actually think it was really, really, really good, and I enjoyed making it, and I really want to share it with you. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to past me to tell you about the video you're about to watch. I want to talk to you today about 10 really fun lock sport hobbies and skill sets that take lock sport beyond just lock picking. Some of these you may have already tried, some of them you may not have even thought of, but I hope that whatever your experience, this leaves you inspired to try out a new skill or return to one you haven't tried for a while. It isn't long into a lock picking hobby that you'll want to start making your own tools. The first thing that most people try to do is make their own tension tools. Here's some wiper blade insert material and just with a few bends and snips with a pair of pliers, you can start to make your own bottom of the keyway and top of the keyway tension tools. And they really are that easy to make. As you can see, they come in different thicknesses and you can bend to whatever specification you like to get tension on your locks. If you're into lever lock picking, then just grab yourself some nice steel wire, some shrink tubing, and then you can make very easily with some files and a pair of pliers, again, some nice lever wires. If you have access to a rotary multi-tool and a few more materials, you can get really creative with your designs. And quite honestly, it, you just don't need that much in the way of tools to allow your imagination to go wild and start creating some really cool things. If you can learn to braise using some moderately inexpensive materials, you can really start to make some interesting tools of your own. For example, this lever lock tension tool is made out of a nail and this two in one lever lock pick is made out of some knurled knobs, some grub screws and a little bit of steel tubing. I've personally found tool making to be one of the most enjoyable aspects of my lock sport hobby for myself and I know that's true for many, many other pickers. If you have access to some sandpaper, some files, maybe some feeler gauge or wiper blade inserts and optionally some shrink tubing, you can start to do one of the most enjoyable side hobbies in lock sport and that is of course lock pick making. They don't have to be pretty, this was the first lock pick I ever made by myself just using some feeler gauge, some shrink tubing, files and sandpaper. Not only is lockpick making incredibly satisfying, but you can start to make tools for very specific purposes. For example, this super long nose pick for picking a super deep keyway. If you're able to get hold of some high yield stainless steels, which are much better for pick making, then of course you can start to make better, stronger picks. Uh, if you can't get hold of that, there are some companies that do uh, pre-made pick blanks. And of course, the handle material is entirely up to you. It's amazing what you can choose to make a lockpick handle from and get epic results. The process of making a pick is very satisfying and doesn't involve too many tools or techniques. Maybe some rotary multi-tools, grinding, sanding, filing and gluing. It's a very interesting and involved experience and can produce some really, really stunning results. You are only limited by your imagination and it truly is amazing what you can make. These are just some of the lot picks I've made recently and this one was even made with some spare RAM that I had lying around. And yeah, it's just such a good hobby. I, if you haven't created your own lot picks yet, I would very much recommend you go out there and give this a go. One of the biggest parts of the lock sport scene and community is challenge lock making. For those who aren't familiar with the concept, a challenge lock is just taking a standard commercial lock, swapping out the pins, maybe the springs, maybe even modifying the insides, uh, the core and the Bible, to make a standard commercially available lock trickier or more challenging to pick. Sometimes they are just there for fun and introduce new concepts. Uh, sometimes they're there to really challenge another picker or yourself and 
Honestly, you can do anything with any lock. Given that you can use any lock type, how you choose to modify it with what pins and springs is entirely up to you. For those who aren't particularly creative, you might want to just try buying sets of commercial security pins and swapping them out of your locks. And for those who have the ability to do so, you can take some three millimeter brass rod like this and start to make and create some really, really epic different shaped security pins to really make those locks extra, extra tricky. There are a few commercially available challenge pin designs out there which I helped create. So these ones are based on chess pins. These ones are Christmas themed. And these ones are all based on munitions. One of the best places to start if you're a beginner challenge lock picker is just using these key and knob cylinders. They're incredibly cheap, especially secondhand, can offer lots of different key bittings and are very easy to take apart as well. Clearly, the point of a challenge lock is to send it out to the community. And that's one of the other advantages of taking up challenge lock making is that community spirit, the idea that you're going to make something, send it out into the community, see how other lock pickers approach it. Uh, let them have some fun. You get the enjoyment of seeing other lock pickers be challenged by it. It really is a core part of the lock sport community. And again, it's one of those skills or side hobbies in lock sport that I just would encourage anybody to give a go, even if it's just once. Make yourself a challenge lock, see if you can pick it, send it out, let other people enjoy it too. It really is fantastic. If you have access to a maker space or machine shop with mills and lathes, maybe some CNC tools and laser cutters, it's amazing what you can start to make as a lock picker. Just for example, here we have some milled pinning trays in wood and aluminium. If you had uh, a metal lathe, you can start to make distatainer picks. And here we have two prototype tools that I use a laser cutting service to produce. So it really is a, a bit more of an advanced skill and hobby to get into this kind of more advanced machining. But again, the rewards can be really epic. We talked earlier about simple tool making, and I think one of the natural progressions from that is tool modifications. And that can start simple, for example, taking cheap Chinese dissertainer picks like that and modifying them so that they are uh, more useful in more locks. You see here that I've modified both the picking and tension tip here to work in a much wider range of locks. Here's another example of a simple tool modification. One of these rear disc detainer picks you can buy, modify it so it's an actually pick an Abus Plus lock. A cool tool modification that I would encourage anybody to try is to take something like a selfie stick and make yourself a set of concentric plug followers out of them. It's a really cheap, simple hack, and it will provide you with loads of different sizes of plug follower for all different types of lock. Other popular tool modifications for lock pickers includes modifying things like um, multi-tools. You can really let your imagination go wild. Here's a concept I had where um, I converted some of the multi-tools that are available into picks and circlip removers, and I think on this side, I had uh, plug followers. It's amazing what you can do. Again, it's only limited by your own imagination. And here's an absolute classic modification, which is using old cheap knives to make lock picks from. Tool modification is definitely one of the more fun and creative aspects of lock sport. You really can take tools which were designed originally for lock picking and make them better all the way through to using items which were never intended for a lock sport application like selfie sticks and cutlery and make something really awesome from it. This is one of the most fun parts of the hobby for me because it's, I think it's one of the most creative to be able to look at something and see how it can be improved or modified into a, a new or better thing. Um, it really is quite wonderful and I love it. We couldn't do a presentation like this without mentioning 3D printing, which is technically two different skill sets. The skill set of 3D printing in itself, and of course doing all the CAD work so that you can design some amazing tools. It really is revolutionary, not only in lock picking, but many other hobbies for making small parts, uh, small batch tools, 
rapid prototypes. I mean, the list is genuinely endless. Uh, it just involves a little bit of familiarity with some of the 3D design software, and there's lots of free stuff available. But you could also go online to places like Thingiverse and download or purchase some uh, 3D files, which you can either print yourself or get a 3D printing service to do for you in a range of different materials from PLA to ABS to even metal. And what you can create in Locksport, again, like a, like a lot of these side hobbies, is only limited by your imagination when you really get going. I myself uh, designed things like a little pinning tray, which is to my own personal taste and specification. Um, you can look that up on Thingiverse as well as this, they're free, which is a uh, holder for l different types of locks and euro cylinders to rim cylinders to kick cylinders and all that kind of thing. And then there's so many other creators out there. Here's just some stuff from other creators. We've got some uh, front followers in a custom holder. We have uh, disc detainer picks, which are really incredible. And, and even educational uh, tools, which describe how you can uh, pick locks and how they work um, really is just fabulous. I think that 3D printing is now becoming something which more people can access. The costs are coming down lower. There's more resources and tutorials out there for people. And uh, the bank of designs, free designs out there for people to download and try themselves um, is increasing all of the time. The next thing I want to talk about has an incredible significance within the lock sport community. In fact, so much so that People who do this sometimes do this more than they do lock picking. What am I talking about? Well, of course, I'm talking about key impressioning. For those of you who aren't familiar, key impressioning is where you take some key blanks like this for a lock you don't have a key for like this, and you try to make a key for it by impressioning the pins or wafers or levers onto the key blank and filing those impressions down until finally you get a working key. I can show you a few clips of a video where I actually take vintage lock which didn't have a key and I create a key for it which actually added quite a lot of value to that rare lock. Here's a close up of a key which was impressioned using some files and some grips and as you can see, it works brilliantly in the lock as intended. As long as you have a lock and a suitable blank, the price of entry to key impressioning is surprisingly low. Some good vice grips like this are a help. So is clearly some files and some sandpaper. If you want to get even more professional about it, you can start to invest in proper impressioning files, which mean that you get better, cleaner cuts on the key with every stroke, and maybe some proper uh, professional impressioning grips like this, which give you much better key purchase, and you're less likely to damage the key when you are impressioning it. Some people even like to use magnifying lamps and magnifying glasses and things, so they get a, a better view on the very small marks that uh, you get on it key when you are impressioning it. And of course, like most hobbies, you can go up and up in price for better and better uh, equipment like light boxes and magnifying light boxes and all those kind of things. In the lock sport scene, some people are able to impression a lock within a matter of seconds. And of course, that means there is a really healthy competitive scene out there where people will impression uh, locks in competition. And it really is a fantastic thing to view as well as to try out. So yes, Honestly, do try key impressioning. If you have locks which don't have keys, this is a great way to get keys for them. And as I mentioned earlier, you can actually add some value to them. I hope we can all agree that professional cutaway locks are really, really cool. And certainly worthy of any lock picker's collection. But you can also make them. For example, you can take just a simple snapped lock like this and using nothing but a hacksaw blade and some files, you can make this. In fact, I did make this, and I can show you me uh, just going through the processes of making this on a short clip. It really is a lot of fun. 
clearly you can put as much time into it as you want and shine it up and make it look as nice as you like and file it all smooth and all those kind of things. Um, but you really don't have to. They are a really great educational aid and it's one of those things which if you've never done, I would recommend you give it a go at least once. If you've got access to the tools and skills required, you can even start to mill out your own cutaways like this. This amazing cutaway was actually done by a hobbyist, not by myself, I have to say, and it just shows what uh, a little bit of skill and the right tools can allow you to do. Honestly, this is one of the, I guess, the harder skills to pick up, but making your own cutaway locks is just so cool. Another super, super fun side hobby in lock sport is key casting. What do I mean by that? Well, you might have seen spy films where people take a key, they put it in a little box with some clay or modeling clay in there, take a, a, an imprint of the key, give the key back and then go away and make a copy of that key. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about here. It's one of those skills which um, can be used by locksmiths or even pen testers where they might not have access to a key for very long and want to be able to make a copy of that key. But besides that, genuinely, it's such a fun thing to do to be melting these low melting point metals and, and making cast keys. It's just something really relaxing and just really cool about it. Here is a cast key and you can see that when done properly, they're almost indistinguishable from the real thing, apart from the fact they're a little bit more brittle. If you've got the money, you can actually buy casting uh, kits from various manufacturers, but the price of entry to this hobby is, or at least can be, relatively low. All you need is some modeling clay to be able to take uh, an impression, uh, maybe some tap and pads to make sure that the two halves of your impression of the key don't stick together, some kind of clam case or, or box which you can modify to put the plasticine in to take a cast, some low melting point metal, which you can find um, all over the internet, something like, I think it's woods or fields metal, a way to melt it and something to melt it in. And and that's really it. Um, it, it does take a little bit of skill and practice, but you can actually do dimple keys, lever lock keys, standard pin tumbler keys. The, the list is really endless. Um, I've even had fun doing coin casting <laughs> and, and, and Lego casting and things like that. Um, it really is a lot of fun as a hobby. And certainly, again, one of those things which if you've never tried, definitely worth trying a couple of times. It's really good fun. And the last side hobby I'd like to leave you with is one of my personal favorites. And it's something which not a lot of lock pickers actually touch on uh, for, for various reasons, but I generally get, again, some of the most enjoyment out of the hobby doing this sort of thing. And that is just sort of creative making, whether it be uh, jewelry or, or other objects, just using uh, lock picking and lock sport related items. So uh, some examples are where I made a silver plated uh, Celtic cross pendant here, literally out of a key that I had and a rotary multi-tool with offcuts from the resin and rosewood that I used to make this pick. I made this really cute little rosewood and resin heart pendant with a little lock symbol in the middle from old stripe plates. I make really cool little key rings here. And most recently, I made some lock pick rings out of lock picks. Um, literally taking a lock pick like this, bending it and then using a uh, silver solder to brace it all together. And with a little bit of polish, you can get something like this. In fact, all through this video, you might have seen me wear one, which I wear every single day. So there you go. That's my top 10 lock sport hobbies to try beyond lock picking. That isn't all of the hobbies. It's just my favorite ones. You might have other hobbies and skills that you do in your lock sport hobby that I haven't even mentioned here and I think that's absolutely brilliant. 
So there you go. I really hope you enjoyed that video just as much as I enjoyed making it. It covers a load of things that I genuinely really like to do um, within lock sports. You know, lock sport is not just about lock picking. There's so many other things to explore and there's probably so many things I didn't mention like for example lock collecting, lock restoration, there's probably a million other things out there which I just didn't even touch upon um, which I'd love to hear about in the comments below. Um, please, if you did like the video, if you did like that presentation, please leave a like, it really helps me out and I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. I read all the comments, reply to as many as I can. Um, and of course, if you haven't subscribed and you want to see more videos like this, then please consider subscribing as well. And I'll see you all next time.